Divergent is a YouTube channel that examines various topics. We've seen him before when he examined old paintings and claimed that was evidence for the existence of ancient giants. And that there are hidden lands beyond the ice wall. Well, you won't be surprised to hear that he also thinks that the moon's surface is a map of our planet. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Fall Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of this video, Boot.dev. Boot.dev is building the smartest way to master back-end development by tackling the hardest problem with online learning, boredom. What they do is use tactics learned from modern game design to push ambitious students towards their goal, a career in back-end development. So the smartest way to learn to code is to make sure you're never bored. And Boot.dev is online, self-paced, and feels like a captivating RPG game. And you will learn back-end and web development from start to finish in the Python and Go programming languages. And the platform's designed to get you writing a ton of code. Because getting your hands on the keyboard and shipping projects is the only real way to learn. At boot.dev, they believe that learning to code is not a get rich quick scheme. They believe in going deep and taking time on the fundamentals so that you're truly prepared for a job in tech. And programmers actually have amazing earning potential. According to Stack Overflow, the median salary for back end developers in the US in 2023 was over $100,000. But they also realized that not everyone can afford a membership. So all boot.dev content is free to read and watch in guest mode. A paid membership unlocks hands-on coding, AI assistance, progress tracking, and gamification, which makes the content immersive. Click the link in the description and use my code SIMANDAN to get 25% off your first month, or even your first entire year if you choose the annual plan. Right, on with today's Tim Fall Tuesday, which as I said at the start is from Divergent. And he's found the graphic about the moon and is determined to tell us all about it. Away we go. Earth's terrain on the moon, the moon being the map of the lands and the oceans, Vibes of Cosmos, this is page 30 and 31 from the sixth book of Vibes of Cosmos, thank you very much, Vibes of Cosmos, for all the previous five books and this the sixth book, let's read this, this is awesome, amazing, now that we know that the, the moon is not a solid sphere of rock and dust, as you know, and we're off to a flyer. Of course, it absolutely is a solid sphere of rock and dust. That's exactly what it is. In fact, it's even got a mantle and a core, just like Earth, albeit a bit cooler. So Earth terrain, let's see. Having seen both the levels of the land and the oceans, well, in the previous pages, he explains a bit more about this. So I'm going to read it in the future videos. Uh, we can now examine the background terrain of the Earth, because this is what we see on the moon or the moon we see in the sky is actually the terrain of the earth, the earth's surface with the lands and the oceans. And this is the crux of this belief. There are people out there who genuinely believe that the surface of the moon is a rudimentary map of the earth's surface. I know, I know. Um, so, thus we are given the opportunity, um, so the background is x-ray, is seen on the moon, the background x-ray is seen on the moon. We are given the opportunity to see in great detail the texture and gradations throughout its surface. Some examples of craters, chasms, continents, etc. are described here. So, as you can see, he put uh, one, two, three, seven, eight. There's eight numbers in white on the moon, which uh, uh, have the descriptions on the sides. Number one, uh, which is this one. So number one, let's do this one. So I'm here, zoom, number one. Number one is here, this one here. And on the left side, it says Bird Crater uh, is in land, is in land area of Pangea, Pangea, so the, the forbidden continent, which is uh, beyond the Antarctic Treaty limitations. So an area of land outside the ice wall is what he means by that. Coincidentally named the same as the ancient supercontinent from 250 million years ago. A part of this huge continent that's called uh, Ebet. As we see in its formation, a straight fissure in the ground, a longitudinal chasm with a length of over 2,500 kilometers passes close to it. Amazing. Number two, Copernicus crater. Number two is this one here, which is very big. You can see it on the moon. Copernicus. Is, uh, so this is these probably one of the most recognizable craters on the moon, that one, along with Tycho. The names are from the 3D map of the moon, which was taken from the photos and uh, put in a system 3D on computer for, so we can work with it. 
and understand. Copernicus crater is an undersea crater, so under the water, on the depths of the ocean, in Kronos Ocean, which is again is between Atlantis and Pangaea continents, so the forbidden continents beyond the Antarctic Treaty. It is one of the deepest places on Earth, on the bigger Earth that shows the moon. What? The deepest place on Earth that we can't actually confirm because it's in this forbidden zone? Right. Number three, let's see if we, this one, in this case, we're a bit lucky because number three is here. And Tycho, which is very, very famous um, uh, scene, is an underwater, uh, don't, mind the spell, don't mind the spellings, underwater, so under the uh, on the depths of the ocean crater, on Earth's crust, located in the southwest Atlantic Ocean. Well, it's not because there's no giant craters 85 kilometers across in the Atlantic. No, it's in the Atlantic, but it's in the southwest. We can see this crater on the moon with naked eyes, and it is the closest, deepest place on Earth. The closest to us. Oh, the closest to us. So not the Mariana Trench then. Right, okay, I'm learning, I'm learning. Uh, oh yeah, um, this is like 3D print. So you, you can, we see that the plasma moon is not just a two-dimensional print length width, but three-dimensional 3D, which is the depth of the sea is characterized by, in, by the intensity of the white color. Um, on the moon itself, the white, when you see it on the sky, represents the water. So the, the, the brighter the white, the deeper the oceans. Um, thus, we can know the depths of all the oceans and the seas. It's fascinating. And nonsensical, it seems. Now, number four. Number four is here. Plinius. Um, let's see what number four is. Number four crater Plinius is located in Southeast Europe, bordering with Asia. This crater is Black Sea by, by the ancient gods. So this crater is the Black Sea, which is between Europe and Asia. In East Europe, crater Dawes besides this Caspian Sea. So Plinius and Dawes, the reflections of the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea are, uh, on the moon is what we call crater Plinius, Plinius and Dawes or Dawes or whatever. Aside from the fact that the craters are totally different shapes, the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea are roughly the same size. These two craters are vastly different in size. So it would be here, number four, right? Number four. Makes sense because uh, uh, the, the black stuff here are continents. Yeah, perfect sense. So, crater four, black sea. Now, uh, uh, the thing is, some people might get confused why you see them as circle. Yes, definitely. Remember, even the BBC, the cartographers of this world said that the maps that we see in our atlases and what we are used to see in school and stuff, those do not represent the actual uh, shapes of the continents and the, uh, and, and, and the seas in a perfection mode. It's just a something to go by. And I've actually seen that documentary in the 70s on BBC, um, and people don't like to watch those documentaries because you have people who are not financed by Zulu Janemba at that point, and they would just say things as they are. Okay, okay, so this right here is the Caspian Sea on a map. And this here is the Caspian Sea seen from the ISS. Now that looks a pretty good match to me. Now let's continue with number five because I don't want to make this video too long. Number five is here, uh, Palusomni, Indian Ocean. Indian Ocean, Proclus, sorry, Proclus. Indian Ocean in its uh, northernmost parts where it, it wets Asia, relatively shallow, while further south towards Australia, it deepens considerably with the deepest point being the Proclus Crater in the Indian Ocean. Well, that makes more sense, I guess. What am I saying? I'm becoming bewitched by him. Number six, uh, number six is here. Um, it's called uh, Crater Theophilus. It's located in West Central Atlantic Ocean, where it borders with North and Central America. It is the Gulf of Mexico. So number six is the Gulf of Mexico. Well, to be fair, the Gulf of Mexico was the impact site for the uh, asteroid that finished off the dinosaurs, but yeah, still nonsense. Uh, to go by. A nice one, we, we can actually pinpoint um, these craters. And well, the crater map that uh, Vibes, Vibes of Cosm has put in the sixth book is, is mind-blowing. Just have to go through each one of them specifically. I can imagine. Number seven, um, which is actually a continent, but we have the crater there. Number seven, the continent of Africa is the Seretanis area. Amazing, right? So as we said, we know now that on the moon, the shadows, what we call the gray or black stuff, is firm land. So what the people from NASA, I guess, or those who made the 3D print, they call the region or the area of Serenitatis, which is all this area. Number seven 
represents the continent of Africa. I'm sorry, but that does not look even remotely one bit like Africa. Not at all. Dear, oh dear. Um, as the Sereta Seretanis or Serenitatis, sorry, Serenitatis area. So all this is Africa. With some craters in Africa as well. Africa has craters on firm land. Do you get the point now? So this, uh, what vibe? Oh yeah, number eight. Number eight, another continent, which is here, Tranquilitatis, right? I like the name. Uh, the continent of Eurasia. So Europe plus Asia is the Tranquilitatis area. So, so let's get this straight. This relatively small area on the moon's surface represents the two largest land masses on Earth. Sure, sure divergent. That's why I like, so Vibes of Cosmos here, he puts the numbers for different craters and also for two of the continents. So you can understand what's firm land. You can understand that there's, there's craters on firm land and there's, there's craters underwater, so on the depths of the oceans. Serenitatis and Tranquilitatis. This, this was important for me because um, when I was looking at the moon from uh, at the beginning, trying to understand uh, what's firm land and what's oceans, then of course you go to the 3D map of the moon, which has the names um, put by NASA. And sure, this, these things here, they go to confusion because you see the gray areas or the black areas and they say Serenitatis region and Tranquilitatis region. Sure, it makes sense. It's another just code word for Africa and Eurasia. Well, it's not. It's the name that they give to the seas on the moon. Large and dark solidified lava plains on the moon's surface. That is all. Because uh, you see clearly how these are like more grayed or like more like a deeper black color and the rest, which is white, um, are the oceans or the water. There's more o ocean and water than land, definitely. Uh, the moon shows it like that. Although I have to say the Pangaea content is very big. Man, it's kind of, I don't know why when I'm doing the vibes of cosmos uh, information, I get tired really quickly because I think like my brain functions at a super high speed mode. I want to put in a, in a short video the, the amount of information that vibes of cosmos has in the books and I get tired thinking and, and speaking and explaining, I get tired because it's, it's actually difficult to explain to people who don't have the book to read it. Here's an idea, don't read it. Do yourself a favor and bin it. Do not let anyone else read it ever again because the information contained within it is total nonsense. At least on these pages it is anyway. Well, what do we all think of that? I'm afraid we're all done and dusted for another Tinfoil Tuesday. Let me know in the comments below what you think of that one and whether or not Divergent will get rid of his book. Thanks so much for watching. It is of course truly appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. Uh, that would be extremely appreciated. And of course, if you really liked it, you can share it amongst your friends too. Just enough time to once again thank boot.dev for sponsoring today's video. Remember, click the link in the description, use my code SIMANDAN, and you get 25% off your first month or even your first entire year if you choose the annual plan. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all on Friday where I can't tell you what's coming up Friday because it's a secret, but I know you're going to love it. See you then. <laughs>